I've done quite a few videos on NICAP on Minjimbal and I've explored a lot of the different complexities relating to it. Now, after months of exploring the information, refining information and documentation as well, there are certain things now that um, are not relevant that were brought up in the past and there were things that were brought up in the past that may need a little bit more information or clarification added to them so essentially what I'm going to do now is go through all the information that I have and put it in the briefest simplest terms so that it is in more of a time flow manner so that you can not only understand the people involved, the land involved, but how they all became involved with each other. And so that essentially I lay down the beginnings of the story so that you can attempt to piece it together yourself from what I give. Now, what I've been able to put together so far I dare say that I could actually review everything as soon as I've made them because this is an evolving project but it has roots that go back over 10 years and that goes back to 2009 and Peter Van Lyshout. So what you need to imagine here is that as I found out through the course of investigations that Peter Van Lyshout is related to other Van Lyshouts who are wealthy businessmen and you know people of influence apparently and he seems to be the well I suppose the quiet underachiever of the family but um, Peter Van Lyshout is the landowner who owns the majority of the land that is now in question but before I bring it to Nightcap on Minjimbal, I'll deal just specifically with Peter Van Lyshout before he got involved with Nightcap on Minjimbal. And Peter Van Lyshout approached them. And that, getting in bed with them, was a very big cause of contention in the community. Because now, I'm going back to Peter Van Lyshout because, um, well, Billy Fitzgerald complained about how I said that his wife was the mayor and it's never going to happen. Well, let me explain that everybody understands nepotism and everybody would understand that this man over here, Peter Van Lyshout and his wife, Joan, now, Joan was the mayor of the Tweed Council. Joan here was the mayor of the Tweed Council when her husband, Peter Van Lyshout, put in his development application. Now, that development application raised a lot of community concern and uh, they were against it. And despite all the community opposition, his wife, being in the position of mayor, was in a position to give him a friendly outcome. That doesn't imply anything other than the fact that his wife, do we get this? His wife favoured her husband as mayor of the Tweed Council. And well, I'm not even going to get into the council politics of what happened because of that. Because you can understand there were people that were on the council that objected to nepotism, to showing favouritism and to perhaps overlooking all the concerns that others weren't because that was her husband's application. Now, if Joan Van Lyshout can suddenly not become Peter Van Lyshout's wife, can suddenly not have ever been mayor and had any influence in it. What would the outcome have been 
with all of those council members that were actually supporting what the community was wanting as well, which was to not have the development go through, all of those councillors, without the influence of Joan Van Lyshout supporting her husband, what would the outcome be? Now, I think that anyone with a, a working brain could actually figure out that the outcome, considering that most everybody else within the council was against it, that the outcome would not have been approval. But that approval was granted. It was given. Let's have a look at it. But before we have a look at the original DA, here's, um, there's two PDFs that you can access the, through the Tweed Council and documentation about what went on. So here we have the Mayor, J. Van Lyshout, which is Joan Van Lyshout. And over in this one, the 5th of May 2009, we also have as Mayor J. Van Lyshout, who is Joan Van Lyshout, as everybody knows, and is also the wife of Peter Van Lyshout. Now, you can't avoid the fact that they are husband and wife. And in all logics, the fact that these two have grown old together, uh, she's not a supportive wife, she's not supporting her, her husband's endeavours. Well, there was community objection. Uh, there was articles written, photographs taken of groups of people objecting to what is going on. But Joan Van Lyshout as mayor pretty much made sure that her husband's development went through. Now, does that imply anything other than the fact that she's been a good wife, doing what a good wife would do, favour her husband? It is not my decision to actually say that in her position she should not be showing that favouritism and nepotism and that all things should be fair and equal. Well, all things were not all fair and equal. There was favouritism, and that is a fact. But as the way of love stories can go, they do sour. Not that their relationship soured, but after all that effort, all the opposition, and finally getting DA approval, and Peter Van Lyshout didn't have the money to complete what he wanted to do. So therefore, for the whole five years that the application that he got approved was approved and valid, he did absolutely nothing. And so that DA lapsed. And if we go right down to the oh, very bottom here, whoops. Sorry. Um, this is the last page of the application. Uh, well, the approval, sorry. And that says the consent to lapse on the 29th of June 2014, which it did, and no extension was requested. He had not even started anything of stage one. And I'm not quite sure on this, but I'm pretty sure that if you have not at least started to do something in the first five years of the stage one of the road and infrastructure that you said you were going to do at least something, then you can't actually appeal to get it extended because you did nothing. You can't get nothing extended. So you actually have to do something within that five year period to actually give you the ability to appeal and extend the application. That application ceased. It became null and void on the 29th of June, 2014. Now this DA is the basis of what is now being sold as the whole nightcap on Minjimbul. But I'm not going to get into that here because we're only going to deal with specifics 
and go through each item and then tie them all together perhaps at the end <laughs> in other videos. So the approval was granted in 2009. In 2011 there was an amendment made which actually reduced the number of lots that could be used and made other changes to what the approval was given for. So as you can see here it's an amendment to development consent for a stage development application, blah blah blah. So, but essentially here the stage one works involving construction of access road to the village from Kygal Road, construction of car parking area for 69 cars and three bus bays, and a six lot subdivision at lot 121 DP, um, I won't read through all of those, that's boring, you can read that, and I'll provide a link for these anyway. So the amendment actually included reducing the development. Instead of six lots, they were now saying only three. So as you can see down here, that for three subdivisions, that, that it had to be reduced from six lots down to three. So they were actually reducing the size of the development, not increasing the size of it. Now whether or not this DA application approval was showed favouritism or not is clearly up for debate when you have got the man's wife as mayor and is heading the whole agenda to actually get the approval. Now we know that now you can't get approval for 3222 and a lot of the other area that Peter Van Lyshout owns because it is a water catchment area and there are also other things that the council considered. So it is one of those things that you can question whether it, Peter Van Lyshout was actually using his relationship with his wife to actually get benefit where or anybody else wouldn't have. Because if anybody else had put in that application, when it is contrary to the environmental and other laws and the water catchment area to put that in there, well then uh, you would have to say that if nobody else could have got it, then how did Peter Van Lyshout get it in the first place? But these questions would be all mute simply for the fact that in June 2014 he had done nothing and it ceased. So for all the objections, for anything that uh, may or may not have gone on, the end result is the consent lapsed nothing was done and nothing more ever can be done. A fresh application would have to be put in. It cannot be put in on the basis of reviving this old obsolete one because it's invalid. The approval ceased. None of the conditions of stage one were actually met to actually validate the ability to actually ask for an extension on the application. So I've been through this with uh, other videos but I'm going to try and keep it on track with just this one because this DA is used as the foundation, an obsolete invalid DA that was, well let's just say, given under favourable circumstances because, you know, a wife and a husband support each other. That's, that's nepotism that goes on in the world. We all know it does. Whether it's fair or not to everybody else, whether it's fair to the people in the community that objected, but it doesn't matter what their objections are because, <laughs> well, the, mayor's wife, the mayor is the wife of the, the guy that wants to do it. So, you know, if she wants it, the chances are she's in a position to help him make it happen. And that is 
saying just clear and obvious what anyone would know. That the wife of a man is more than likely to help him. Whether well, you think she's going to make it hard and sabotage him? <laughs> Come on. Partnerships are for support, for helping each other. It's the very foundation of any relationship, well, it's supposed to be. Mutual reciprocity, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing? Or are we expecting that Joan wasn't doing any of it to help her husband? That she wasn't perhaps seeing things through rose-coloured glasses because her husband was going to make money out of it and get what he wants? And that would just make life at home so much easier for her too because a man that doesn't get what he wants is always grumpy. So give a man what he wants and life's sweet for us women, eh? <laughs> so before Bulla Bulla, Nightcap and any of that, there was Peter Van Lyshout and all of his land. The bulk of the land that Nightcap on Minjimbal now claim in their planet document to be all part of the broader development. So where the council had told Peter Van Lyshout it can only get smaller, not bigger, uh, now they're saying that, and uh, they are saying there is existing approval for 424 lots. Both Adrian Brannock and Rich Moat say this in the official video. Now, that is a lie. There is no existing approval none whatsoever but that's jumping ahead isn't it because we're only dealing with Peter Van Lyshout. Peter Van Lyshout is still yet again to like obviously all the opposition in the community did not bother Peter or Joan and after he could not complete any of stage one after he went through all of that to get it and so did Joan to get it for him uh, he couldn't do anything with it. So then along come some others and he, he, he has these little dollar signs flash in front of his eyes and he goes, oh, finally, I might be able to get what I want. Hmm. PVL, that's a bad mistake. They saw you coming. And not only did the community object to you the first time, they object that then you went and made it worse by signing contracts with them. Contracts now that I believe that you really regret, don't you? Because, well, we've heard the Voxes. We know how they feel about you. You're a mushroom, mate, and a cash cow. A cash cow with all the land that they can then use. And they'll tie you up in litigation to make sure that they get to use it and not you. But anyway, as I said, I'm getting ahead. That is Peter Van Lyshout. That is the one and only existing DA approval that was ever associated with any of the titles there. And that lapsed over six years ago now. It was never revised. You could not even reapply because he had done nothing. Now, I could be slightly wrong in that area, as I said, that I'm, one, oh, I'm not 100% sure that he could not have made another application. But it's mute. The application was never made. He never applied to, do, to get it extended. And it's that simple. Now, Peter Van Lyshout has had some associations and dealings with other people that I will introduce in another video when I have clarification of it. But the, as I've said, the main bulk of the development land of Nightcap on Minjimbal is Peter Van Lyshout's. And at this stage, I still believe it's actually under contract from Peter Van Lyshout and isn't actually owned by Nightcap on Minjimbal. And that contract that Peter Van Lyshout signed, apparently he cannot get out of. I tell you what, Peter Van Lyshout should find a better lawyer because there is no contract made that is bulletproof and cannot be broken. Any decent lawyer will tell you that. 
because you go to a lawyer and say, I want to make a bulletproof contract, doesn't exist. You can't do it. There is always a way of breaking a contract, always. What you may have trouble finding is the person that actually has the motivation to actually do that. Most lawyers are going to tell you that the cost of trying to break that contract, the likelihood of your success, weigh them together and advise, well, I don't want you to waste my time on something that's not going to result in a good outcome. I mean, sure, the lawyer's going to get paid, but they essentially don't want to do work that they can't put on their resume that, hey, I've won every case I've taken on. See, any case they take on that they don't get a successful result, they look at that as a stain on their reputation. So they are only going to encourage what they know they can win. Any risks, well, that's a risk that they tarnish their reputation on. So Peter Van Leishout is still the owner of the bulk of the majority of land that the Nightcap on Minjimble development claim as part of the development and are using for their own benefit. And on that note, I think I've said enough about before Nightcap was Nightcap and I'll uh, tell you more on the next one. <laughs> Catch ya.